What's up, fellas? Welcome back to the channel. Just back in the rodeo, stock show. I'm on my go. Up later in the weekend for the short, probably take that. I'm gonna melt a buckle too many cents, so worry about that. We're back on the help on here today, boys. We got some we got some doing do in the back here. She uh she sounds like duty. But uh let's waste our time, let's get to it. Keeping up with the channel, you know, not too long ago, I replaced the stereo in the Camaro uh, due to some functionality issues. Got the new stereo in and works great, looks great. Sounds not so hot. It's not the stereo's fault. I believe it's these factory speakers. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let me play a little something. And maybe it'll pick up on the camera. I don't know. We'll see. You hear it? You hear it clipping back here? You hear that mess? Can't have that. I don't know if it's picking it up. You definitely hear some clipping. It sounds like it's just completely blown up. And you really, this is... Oh, let's just turn that off now. We're done with that. That was only on 5 or 6. This thing goes up to 40, I think. That's not going to work. Here's how we're going to fix that. You don't burp on pizza? Didn't taste good going. It didn't taste good the other way. It tastes only tastes good one way. Let's talk about what I got. Let me just put this over here now. This is what I got. I got some rear speaker deletes. Well, not really deletes. They're replacements. I got them Crutchfield, and I just ordered some speakers. I ordered some good ones. I think they're pretty good. We'll find out. When you order from Crutchfield, you're like, well, Crutchfield's way over expensive. Way over, way over expensive, not even a word. It's not even something anybody ever says. They'll say, well, they might say it's way more expensive than buying it off the Amazons. It's not. It costs less when I bought it from um, the Crutchfield than when I bought it from the Amazons. Plus, I got more. I got speaker adapter kits to go in so it fits the factory holes. They also sent me a wiring kit. It's just some wires and some looks like some connectors and some foam insulation. There's the directions I was looking for earlier. Sent directions on how to remove the speakers and how to get all the trash out of that. Because we gotta take the whole back of the interior part to get these stupid speakers in. But here's what everybody wants. Never mind the box. The box, it came perfectly fine in the box. The box was fine. I did this trying to get it out of the box that came in because there are so many. You put this box in a box exactly the same size and you just put peanuts on top. In order to not get peanuts from here to two counties away, I accidentally ripped the box open. But this is what I got Infinity Kappa, uh, 693M. 360 watt peak 120 watts RMS. I don't know what that speaker that stereo puts out. It's ain't 120 watts RMS, I don't believe. But let's talk about the specs. Where are the specs? And they're on the side. So I don't dump everything out. We'll, we'll look at this. This isn't my unboxing. Ripping shit out of here. I've got some more rings. It's more tore up box. And some more foam. There's even a template inside if you want to custom mount these. Here, here's our specs. All right. Like I already said, 120 watts RMS, 350 watts peak. Uh, sensitivity 94 decibels at 2.83 2.83 volts. Um, your frequency response is 35 hertz to 40 kilohertz. Yeah, 40 kilohertz. And the way, who cares about the way? Again, Crutchfield sent it. It was not, the box not damaged. That's, that's all. Me. But inside the box, you get these, well, you get this bag of goodies, which is just a little instruction manual. Some, you get the instruction manual. You get some stickers if you're into stickers. 
You get some little emblems, little plastic emblems, logos, and then you get your mounting hardware. You get your screws and you get your little clip nuts. I don't think we'll need those. Uh, and then you get these rings. I'm not real sure what these rings are for. They're probably taking that. Got itch. Probably taking that little instruction manual. As a matter of fact, it shows right there. Uh, some kind of offset ring. I don't know what it is. Probably won't. Gonna, probably not going to use it. And then we got our speakers. And these are pretty nice. Uh, you got a speaker grill in here. Not bad. And then here's your speaker. So we got a three-way speaker. It's got an active crossover in it. You can cut out uh, zero decibels is selected. Negative three decibels is your cutoff. Uh, if it's unselected, um, I'm not sure. I think this is a rubber surround and a I can't remember what the cone is made of, but it's some kind of fiber material. It was pretty good. It's pretty heavy. Um, and then we got some nice mounts back here or uh, connections. So thread type connections, just and you know, tighten it down. Um, yeah, pretty heavy magnet should handle and respond pretty well. You can see in there your little crossovers, and of course you get dose. That's two in French. That's the speakers. Now what did Christmas? So the speakers. Speakers cost two two forty, and they were on sale sixty forty percent off something like that. The regular three fifty, and I got them for two forty. You do the math. That was from Crutchfield, and they're the same price on Amazon. But Amazon, you just got the speakers. You just got that box and whatever came in it. Crutchfield, <clears throat> this is bought through Crutchfield. They sent this kit. This is a hardware kit. Uh, let's see what's in it. So these scissors. I don't have scissors. I have a dull knife though. And it's got more foam insulation. Just to keep it from rattling around, I guess. Uh, some speaker wire to tap in, I guess. And a bunch of little connectors. We got some bus splices. We got some spade terminals, which we probably won't use any of those. I don't know yet. Maybe we'll see what happens when we get the other ones out. And then some more fasteners and some more uh, clips. Free the proper mounting ring. So we can mount these in the factory hole. Ah, your scissors right there. <laughs> scissors right there. And more screws. And instructions on how to put these in. So, looks like those speakers will mount in here. And we'll just pop these in. Put your fastener in there. Your factory fastener. You should mouse in just like the original ones did, which would be nice. And Crutchfield also, the thing you're not going to get from Amazon's is instruction manuals. So maybe you can. You might be able to order them off. You can get anything off the Amazon's. They're good, they're good to wear too. Uh, so I've got a coupe. This tells us how to do the, how to take. Everything apart in there you need to take, because it seems like you have to take everything apart in the back ass of that car. So I'm not going to bore you with taking it all apart, but I'll show you the instructions. If you want to, you can pause each one and read it for yourself. Whoa. So there's sheet one. Sheet two. And there's sheet three. And that, fellas, is how you install these into the factory holes. Probably could do it some other way, but if you're gonna hack and stuff up, I'm not. So now what I'm gonna do 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get all that trash taken out, get these put in, and then we'll see how she sounds after that. Hopefully she sounds a lot better. It'd be a waste of money. It'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Anyway, let's get at it. Quick little tips here. So that back, that back cushion there, that was the bottom cushion is really easy. Back came out really easy. You get one nut there, two bolts on either side here. That comes out pretty easy. Uh, then you just take the seal plates off, pretty easy. Then you take these big side panels off. That bad boy right there. Take it off either side. And these window trim panels up here. It says to take these off first. Don't do that. Take these off first. Take these rear pedal panels off first. You gotta, there's a stem only screw back there you gotta take off, and one up here. Then the rear panel, uh, where it water falls down in front, you got four clips. Loosen those, and then reach your hands up in there on both sides, because it's clipped in the middle, and kind of pop those loose, and it'll come out. And then, right over there, is the clip or the disconnect for the harness that goes to the uh, rear brake? That wasn't too bad. It took uh, all of probably 15 minutes tops, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, but like, if, like I said, if you take those, just do what I said. Take those rear uh, pillar panels off first, and then like uh, that rear deck, reach your arms up there, pop the middle ones loose. It should should take 15 minutes to get all that out. So pretty easy. Well, here's the factory speakers. And these things are dirty. Listen to this. Now listen to this. That don't sound good. I don't think she'll buff out. But let me get these. This is the passenger side. This is the driver's side. And we see we got foam around the top here, foam along the bottom. So we're going to do that with these replacements here. So trash can these, and then we'll get those built up. One thing we need to do, we take this foam, and we're going to we're going to put it on this adapter bracket, wherever it's going to touch metal. And they give you plenty in this. I've already done that one. Um, I've got plenty left. This is enough to go around the bottom side and the insulate the ring from the speaker where it sits. So and it's pretty easy. This stuff. You just peel it and stick it. I'm just going to put a, a strip here. This is the speaker's going to sit there like this. This is going to lip up under the, the rear deck. So it's going to be metal here. And then it's going to sit on top of the rear package tray. So it's going to be sitting metal here. So I'm going to put a strip here and then a strip off. Now she's insulated. Now we have no, shouldn't be any rattling or banging between the two surfaces. Because this plastic is going to flex, so it's insulated from the metal structure and then the speaker. And I've already got this one. I've already got this one mounted up. And one thing is these uh these mounts, the holes for them don't really match up with the speaker. So you got two of them in, and then the other one I had to use self tappers on to go through the plastic. So it's not going anywhere though, so that's good. But that one's in there. I get that one in. Uh, then we'll put them in the car, and then we gotta wire them in. I think there's a, there's a, I think the came with some way to wire them up. I think with the bow system is, I don't know. We'll, we'll get there when we get there. Day two. Ran to the issue last night. I didn't do my research like I should have. I figured, you know, just slap these in there, plug it right up. Even though the instructions said, uh, with the factory bow system to install the rear speakers, maybe all the speakers, you have to have aftermarket stereo. Already got one. Uh, what it didn't tell you is you got to bypass the factory amp. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's the factory speakers. And if you notice the plug right here, we got four pins coming in. So 
That's because his wire is separate from this woofer. You got two channels coming out of the amp just for that one speaker. What does that mean for me? It means I can't wire these in. I mean, I guess you could, but from what a uh, little bit of research I've done, if you just try to wire the, uh, you try to wire these in, just maybe on the low side for your for your uh, low input, it doesn't sound very good. So I said, well, I'll just bypass the amp. So you come back here, and those of you want to know, your amp is mounted back here. Here's my inputs. So I got a little schematic here if anyone wants to see. This is a wiring diagram for a Bose system. Now, if you have dark over here, if you have the factory non-Bose system, you should just plug right in and just wire it up, good to go. I thought maybe I could just find the input wires from the stereo going into the amp and chase off those. Doesn't work. These are low uh, low voltage input wires go to the amp, then they get amplified out, sent out to your speaker. Not gonna work. Why is that? I got an aftermarket amp. Should be putting out four bolts. Oh, I think it has to do with that that interface, that little box you have to program to work with all your factory settings. Pretty sure that voltage is going there and getting cut down. To match the factory, I think it's less than one bolt coming into those. So, so there's two ways I got to do this, I guess. Uh, I could take the stereo back out, and I've got some speaker wire. I could just um, splice in at the factory, or I could splice in at the uh, the back of the stereo and run wire all the way back. But the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass the little control module, uh, the Maestro R, or whatever thing is called. I'm going to jump off the back of the stereo, jump around to the factory harness at the uh, interface module. Bypass it all together. That way I don't have to run wires back. I can just connect back here at the amp again, jump her through there, up to the factory wire. We'll see if that works. <laughs> we figured it out. We got it working again. Uh, so the problem was some kind of get up with the uh, the Marsh Joe harness. But let me, let me show you. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. This came off the back of the stereo, wired into here, and then on this end was a connector to connect it into the the Maestro. I don't know why they just didn't have the connector on this end, and that was hard wiring. But so this is uh, what came with the Maestro. Of course, this is over top of it. Uh, I just cut it off here at the factory or at the back of the Pioneer, and then cut it here. Took that connector, connected it back to the um, Pioneer outputs, and it just bypassed this. So this is your left and right rear. The front and um, the front. Left and right, they still have this connected because it's still going through the amp. The factory wire comes in here to, uh, this is X3, X1, X2, X3. This is your inputs for your amp. I just found the left and right rear spliced into there and just ran some more wire up here. And ran some more wire along the harness and then up through here, left and right speakers are in, everything works. Now to get all this back in there. Next time you see me, it'll be back together. We'll do a sound check uh, comparison of before and after. And we'll let you see it. Goodness gracious. Yeah. She's wrapped up. All back together. Everything's cleaned up. Yeah. First time I was probably been cleaning. I don't know. Probably forever. But you know what it sounded like before? I'll probably play right now. And now listen to Now listen. <laughs> Picking it up. Much better. Muy bueno. Well, let's get out of here. Yeah, let's get out of here. Oh, turn off. Don't want to hear that. Let's get out and do this outro. That's that's about all we got on that. That's about all I need on that. Well, it's too difficult. God dang, how many times I crawled back and forth out of the back of that car? Ridiculous. Oh boy. Oh yeah, I'm about wore out. Uh, the installation removal or the Whew. that that plum wore me out right there, boys. 
and gals. Uh, I don't know how many times I had to crawl in and out of the back of that daggum car. If anybody's familiar with these Camaros, there's not much room back there. And I've got a permanent headache now from hitting my head on the door seal there no less than three dozen times. But that's a wrap, folks. Uh, for those of you who hung around, appreciate it. Go ahead and like, subscribe, leave a comment. I always enjoy the comments. Uh, and also, if you've hung around this long, you're probably follow the channel enough to know so let me give you a little update on why it's been so long since i did my last upload uh my work schedule's changed a little bit uh was working 11 on three off schedule uh it's now required for me to be there every friday instead of every other friday so now i'm working a 12 on two off and having every other weekend just a two-day weekend uh takes a takes some toll on you it also doesn't leave me a lot of time to spend with my family and trying to get videos done like i said this took this ended up taking me probably a full day. I started late yesterday, finished early this morning. So it took a full day, so it just leaves me one day to do whatever I want. Um, so that's why it's, it's been like a month since my last one. Um, not sure how long it's gonna last, hopefully not too long, but uh, but for now, I'm just gonna keep it down to once a month, uh, spend a little time with my family, uh, a little time with myself to relax, and maybe possibly do a little better on these videos. So. Uh, one of my, one of my, um, what do you call it? One of the things I want to do this year is focus a little bit better on my editing and in my layout. I used to, I just go straight from the hip, just hit record, just start doing it and no really kind of plan or layout what's going on. So we'll try it this year. We'll do a little better planning. So maybe the, the videos will be better. The videos will be a little better for you guys. So, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And again, we'll see you down the road.